had that experience, you're unable to fall asleep because of that annoying mosquito buzzing in your ear. Well, mosquito season is upon us and whether you're at the cottage in a tent or simply relaxing on your back deck or here in the studio, you know how those little blood suckers can really get to you. The inventor in our next story might have just a ticket for you, but more than helping you or me get some sleep at night, his main goal and a much more important one is helping people in the developing world live to see another day. Warm weather plus wet forest equals one mess of mosquitoes. And no one knows that better than this man. They're breeding all throughout here. Tom Kohler studies mosquitoes for a living and that means where they go, he goes. There we go. As an infectious disease investigator, they are his public enemy number one. Well, a lot of people don't know it, but mosquitoes have killed more people than all wars combined. Every year in the developing world, diseases passed on by mosquitoes cause over one million deaths. But Tom is working to turn that tide with this colorful new invention. The Perfector flower is designed with, with a visual as well as olfactory attractant. And the colors act as visual att attractant. And on the front here, you'll see a screen, and it has a sugar solution containing a biopesticide. I wanted to come up with something that was affordable and, and eco-friendly that people could use in their, in their homes. The idea is pretty simple. Draw the mosquitoes in for a sweet treat and pop them with a mouthful of poison. If you're wondering why sugar, why a flower, you're in for a surprise. Although mosquitoes love a good blood meal, it only makes up about 10% of their diet. The rest is high energy nectar from flowers. So what I was thinking was, well, if we're gonna target when a, a substance that the mosquitoes are gonna feed on, let's target the sugar. So build it, it being a flower, and they'll come, right? Well, not so fast. There's over 3,000 species of mosquitoes in the world, and they all have different preferences. Back in the lab, Tom tries to narrow those preferences down. First up, color. Like a wallpaper salesman, he lays out all the different options. We'll take these different color cards and hang them in into the cage with, containing the mosquitoes, and then we'll observe how often and how, for how long the mosquitoes will land on these different color combinations, and then we'll just whittle it down to the top few colors. See, they're already landed on the black. Turns out mosquitoes in the Anopheles genus prefer red and black. Culex like yellow and green in 80s, red, black, and blue. So it, <laughs> needless to say, it took a long time to figure out these different permutations. Rather than just one color, Tom's using four, along with white and black. We'll put a one middle on each one of these. Next up, the taste test. Different sugar solutions are mixed up, poured into cotton pads, and then given to the bugs and they'll land on that and feed for extended periods of time. And just like with the color pads, we'll, we'll time how long the mosquitoes are on those pads. As you can see, they're all, they're hovering around that Z one right there a lot. A mix of many sugars has the best luck attracting the most mosquitoes. Although Tom's keeping that recipe to himself, the ingredient that makes it kill is no secret at all. Bacillus thuringiensis, also known as BT, is a biopesticide commonly used in agriculture to control moths and caterpillars and flies. What we've done is basically taken BT, tricked the adults into eating the BT formulation, made the formulation so that it changes the pH and the physiology of the adult mosquito, and they rapidly intake the BT and, and die from it. Now Tom just has one test left to do, see the flower in action. You can see they're attracted to it, so they just keep flying towards it. I see he's landed on the central disc already. See that? He's already on the screen, yeah. eaten. Since BT won't harm vertebrates, the flowers are safe to use wherever, and the mesh size is so small, only mosquitoes can actually reach the poison. And once it's eaten, it's lights out. Well, this is remarkable. Our new formulation has really worked well. Of the 30 mosquitoes that started, only four are still buzzing. And though they could still bite, 
Tom isn't worried. There's a thing called the threshold for disease in, in the population. So if, if you can determine what that threshold is and knock the population of mosquitoes down below that threshold, they'll actually stop the cycle of transmission of malaria or dengue fever. Our goal is to knock out 20 to 30 percent of the mosquitoes and in our laboratory studies that we've done, we've uh, had 80 percent reduction in mosquito population within three days and 100 percent within six days. So we're very excited. Tom's already testing a system in a mock village set up in the Puerto Rican rainforest. So far it's holding up just fine to the harsh jungle climate, but its true test is yet to come. The whole objective of, of Provector is to, and my wish is to provide as many people a way of controlling mosquito-borne diseases as, as possible. So if we can knock out 60 to 100 percent of the mosquitoes flying into a home at night, that, that would be wonderful. Seriously though, that was one of the most interesting little mosquito factoids I've picked up recently, that they're attracted to sugar water. Yeah, enough so that you can actually use that as a method of trying to eliminate them.